Hey, what's up? My name is Matthew. This is my bus, Lucy. It's a 1987 uh, Bluebird S1700. Uh, it's got a 6.9 Navistar engine in there. So no chips, no boards, uh, just a straight up diesel engine. It's uh, not the fastest bus, but uh, it'll get up to maybe about 55, 60 miles an hour when we're going down the road. I've had the bus uh, for about three years and I've been living in it full time for the last six months. All right, welcome inside. We're in the uh, living room, dining room area of the bus right now. So it's kind of broken up into two sides. Right side here is the couch slash napping area. So uh, strict, had to have something to lay on to take naps in the afternoon. I don't know why that was so important to me, but I didn't want to put a, uh, a bar up there or another set of table uh, or a desk or anything. So I wanted to have a couch somewhere to hang out, watch TV and, uh, you know, be able to hang out a little bit. On the uh, left hand side, we actually went ahead and uh, put in a folding table here. It can fold down if you need uh, extra room in the uh, living room, but honestly most of the time it stays up, kind of stays the uh, dining room table desk area. This is where I do a little bit of uh, work and uh, planning for uh, the restaurant and stuff like that. Um, underneath each uh, section we have uh, book storage and then art supplies and uh, things like that are all down there. Underneath the uh, large bench in the living room area is the electronics. So we have about 600 amp hours of lithium batteries right there. Ames 2500 uh, inverter charger, our 12 volt fuse block and uh, main, main breaker panel in there. We left a little bit of room because still planning on upgrading to solar on the roof. So enough room to have a charge controller and to be able to get all of our wires in there for solar when we get to there. So got the batteries, have the generator outside, enough power and a 30 amp hookup, but eventually want to get you know some solar on the roof and uh, try to go fully off grid. That would be ideal. The favorite part about this area probably has to be the, the dining room desk area for me. Um, it's where I sit and eat breakfast and hang out. If I have anybody over, we can still sit down and, and have a nice dinner together. And also it functions as my desk a lot of the time in the mornings. So I'll get up, I'll you know journal, I'll do my to-do lists, uh, things like that just to get ready for work. And uh, it's kind of my, my use all area. So I'm always here. I was going back and forth on what I wanted to do. And I was looking at actually getting the industrial uh, drain pipe with the normal like flange fittings and everything like that. And then I came across, of course, something on Amazon that is basically the same exact thing. It's, it's just made of plastic though. So it looks like the, the normal steel uh, piping and drain bars and everything, but it's just plastic. You can get the whole set for like 25 bucks or something. So just pop those on there. And uh, I wanna say some Walmart or Amazon curtains. The, the holders here were leftover fabric from uh, certain things. So there's some that were from the kitchen there were some that f were from cutting up old curtains, so I kind of just used what I could and tried to match the ones that were on the same side. The, th these lights actually were uh, in the bus when I bought them. That was one of the things that the guy before me had installed, and we didn't want to rip out the roof and, and do a uh, full rework and insulation and everything. I would have liked to, thinking back on it now, just a little pricey at the time when I was first building out the bus, I was trying to get by a little more affordably and that was just something I didn't want to do. So we, we were going to leave everything. We weren't going to install any lights in the ceiling and this actually worked really well. So I've kept it, haven't touched it and it's worked great since we had it. So. And I, converted it with my father. It took us a little over two years. I wasn't living where the bus was located, so I was kind of taking trips on the weekends to go work on the bus. Took a little bit of time. Uh, got a little frustrating at, at some time, <laughs> but uh, it's been it's been great. And the past six months has been awesome living in the in the in the bus. I can't I can't say anything bad about it so far. So I came across just tiny houses in general. You know, probably five years ago, something like that came across YouTube pages and uh, van life, you know, was I feel like starting to get pretty big then. And I was looking into tiny houses on wheels and airstreams and vans and boats and just kind of all the possibilities of living a little more affordably, a little more sustainably and not making as big of a footprint as as I feel we do in, in 
bigger houses nowadays. I also feel like I didn't need that much space. I wanted something that was my own. And I came across the school bus conversions and they were starting to take off. I remember seeing, I think Mike from Navigation Nowhere, his bus was kind of the big thing on YouTube and on the internet. And it was really inspiring to see a, a really nice built out bus and how kind of uh, cozy it can feel, how large it, it is on the inside if it's built out properly, and how it can be a nice traveling home that you can take out and explore in, and also just park and hopefully live, live a little more affordably. So I didn't want to go the traditional route that uh, friends and, and people that I saw my age that were getting a mortgage and settling down and getting a house and settling down in one area and I was still wanting to travel, I still wanted to explore, so I wanted the ability to live a little more affordably. So I figured if I could build something out and find a good parking situation, I could save on, on my rent and save up that money and travel a little bit and, and do what I want with it. So uh, a little more, little more freedom, a little less debt and trying to uh, you know enjoy travel. Right. So we're in the kitchen area of the bus right now. I work full time as a cook in a restaurant right now. So having a big kitchen was a priority for me. I, I could have made a bigger uh, living room area or you know had more storage for certain things, but I really wanted two large counters on both sides of the bus to be able to actually really lay stuff out and, and cook. I, I have a pet peeve of working in tiny kitchens because I'm used to working in restaurant kitchens. They're so, they're so big. It's so, uh, so I wanted nice cutting board area, uh, a good amount of prep space, and then a full normal size stove. It's actually maybe 28 inches or something like that. It's a couple inches shorter than uh, a full size, I think 33 inch stove, but it's been converted over to propane. We have a big 100 pound propane tank under the bus that feeds the stove here and the water heater that's under uh, the other side. The idea was originally to just put in standard uh, butcher block countertops and maybe a, a, like subway tile backsplash or something, which you, you just see a lot. And my father actually recommended looking for some live edge slabs that we could find. And there was actually a local guy uh, near my parents that was selling uh, uh, live edge, two inch thick uh, slabs like this. So he had oak and um, sycamore and things like that. So we actually used those, cut those down and did a uh, epoxy resin pour on the countertops. The backsplash was honestly just us having leftover wood pieces from the cuts that we were making here. So what we ended up doing was cutting it down, flipping it up, using it as a backsplash. And honestly, that might be one of my favorite things. I love the live edge on the, on the edge and sealing on the bark and actually keeping that uh, part of the piece. But the backsplashes with a little bit of wave to it and stuff is probably actually my favorite part of the kitchen. And it turned out really good. It was just leftovers. So we were just trying not to throw stuff away. So we basically took the storage from above the same concept of the live edge. We just changed it up. We did some oak boards that we bought from the same guy. Uh, this is just industrial plumbing pipe. Still has the uh, lettering and all that sort of stuff on it. I think this only cost $3 when you went to the, the plumbing supply shop as opposed to the Amazon one that was actually 30. <laughs> so if you actually buy the piping, it's a little bit heavier, but it's also a lot cheaper. Um, up top, just some storage baskets. This helps to actually hold everything in when we're driving. Uh, coffee, coffee mugs, you know, teas, all that sort of stuff just lives up here. And, um, and then we did same thing, just a little bit of epoxy resin pour on the edge of the bark just to help hold it to the wood so it doesn't want to chip off or anything if we do knock into it. So on this side, I wanted to go like restaurant style, 30 something inches, you know, restaurant style uh, faucet. Went with a single basin, really large sink. It's, it still gets filled up when I cook. So there's, but there's still plenty of room to put stuff in there if I want to wait for it uh, later, uh, if I want to let it soak, you know, <laughs> put it in the sink and let it soak. Uh, otherwise, 
the sink actually becomes my storage spot for when I take everything uh, and we go for a drive. So lots of the plants and anything loose, the teapot, all that stuff actually goes into the sink and I just put a pillow on top and then that's that's where everything goes when we travel. Uh, I would put a couple things in the shower, a couple of the bigger plants in the shower. But yeah, just about everything goes in the sink and it makes it really easy because as soon as I'm ready to pack up and drive away, just everything in the sink and then I'm out of here. So drawers in here for all the excess kitchen stuff, mixing bowls and strainers and, and little crocs and then bar barware stuff i got a pasta roller I, I just have so much random cooking stuff i even had to downsize a lot of that when i moved in the bus but you know strainers and potato ricers and mortar and pestle I, I a lot of different stuff but there's all room for it in there same thing with here except we, i just went with one single large one and that's where all the uh the large equipment is so i have the blender the rice cooker kitchen aid uh, stand mixer those things don't come out as often but when they when they do they're all just living down there this was actually a false drawer before when the guy before me was building it so we actually put uh drawer slides on it and made it into a uh, true drawer true drawer and uh so this is all just utensils and and then the one behind it is just my plates. I have some uh, of my stones for sharpening the knives and stuff like that. That all lives in here as well. And then underneath the sink area, we, uh, my neighbor next to us where we were building out the bus, he was actually a, a carpenter and he built this one out for us. We gave him the exact measurements. Uh, when I first had, bought the bus, there was like a, a gallant mini fridge, the retro style fridges in there. He wanted that fridge for his man cave that he was building out. So we, we did like a trade of that mini fridge for him to, to build out the, the cabinet if I just bought some of the wood and the labor was taken in exchange for that. So uh, we did deep drawers all the way to the back. Uh, of course, you gotta have the junk, the junk drawer, you know, batteries and, uh, fuses for the electrical, you know, tape measures, there's a little bit of everything. Uh, all my tools kind of live down here. Um, for the bus, multimeter and, and just little tools when I'm working inside the bus. We put the locks on here for when we're driving so nothing goes swinging open. And at the bottom, I have more tools. I have seeds for the garden, uh, uh, power cord, and that's about it. So. Just lots of miscellaneous stuff kind of living in the drawers. Underneath is a little pull-out double uh, trash can. And then on the left side is the just cleaning chemicals and trash bags and all that sort of stuff. Went with a full-size fridge. I had looked into some of the undercounter ones that I had seen. They have like undercounter fridge and freezers. A lot of those are really expensive. Um, I know the the Dometic propane ones are really nice because they can switch back and forth between 12 volt and propane. But when I found out that they were like a thousand dollars new, I just decided to go with a, a regular house fridge. Uh, so yeah, pretty much full size. As you can see, it's completely crammed full of food right now. Um, but I much rather do grocery shopping every like couple of weeks instead of having to go every couple of days. I just personally don't have the time for it right now. So I, I much rather get a lot of groceries, get in there and uh, not have to worry about grocery shopping for a little bit. Yeah, I, I cook full time and uh, professional cooks and people that do it for a living, they know you can almost never have too many knives. It's kind of a, you know, if you're uh, a skateboarder, you can't have too many decks. If you're, you know, if you start buying house plants, you can't buy enough house plants. It's one of those things you can't have enough knives. So these are all the ones I usually use at work. And then I even have more in my knife case. I've got, I got them everywhere. So, but there's always room for one more. So that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> um, so pantry storage here, same thing. Uh, had the neighbor help us out with uh, installing and making these little pull out drawers. I think that was another trade with something in the bus. It worked out really good because he wanted a couple things out of the bus when we first got it. And I just traded them for a little bit of uh, work in exchange. So uh, six drawers, that's actually more than enough storage for all my dry goods and and bags and uh, pantry items so it, it's been perfect I, I more than enough room
transition wasn't wasn't too difficult near the end selling off a lot of the leftovers and the, the the stuff that you realize you start to accumulate when you live in a house it was i filled up an entire room spare room that we had at the old house with all these things all these kitchen things and platewares i used to do like some dinner party things so i had tables and and plates and glasses and and just so much stuff clothes and shoes and you, and you start to realize just how much we we naturally accumulate even when you're not thinking about it and i really wanted to just kind of burden myself or unburden myself excuse me of a lot of the the material possessions and just kind of pare down to what i really needed what was necessary and you know stop wasting money at the same time on on stuff that just kind of sits around and and accumulates in the house so um transitioning into the bus i was for the last few months before i moved in i was so eager and i was so ready and i had already kind of played it through my mind of where everything was gonna go and the parents were a little nervous like you're not gonna fit everything in the bus like and i had already kind of played it through of you know i knew what was gonna go where so when i kindly when i finally pared everything down and, and sold a lot of the leftovers that i didn't want everything pretty much had a place there was there's still occasionally a couple things that you know if you just had one big closet it would be easy to shove those soccer chairs and and just random things like that you could shove it in but you just got to think uh creatively and i heard someone say that you know you don't have to get rid of stuff uh, all your stuff when you live in a tiny house you just have to find somewhere to hide it which is a pretty good mantra if you can keep it out of view which is what i want it looks kind of clean when you're looking at it but you know there's a uh, you know stuff everywhere <laughs> it still works out so it's uh it looks clean but i still have all my stuff there all right so we're in the bathroom area of the bus right now the bathroom area was basically just built out once we figured out where we wanted to place the bed and we just started working forward we we, we never actually <laughs> did any blueprints or sketches of the bus it was just uh just looking at it and planning and just thinking what what would work and what wouldn't so the uh shower went in first went with the standard uh 36 by 36 shower base or is it 32 by 32 i'm not sure went with the metal roofing material for the inside that was actually seems to be a good good choice so far i know some people said that they had, had have had issues with it rusting or starting to get a little bit of build up but i've been in here full time six months so far and nothing building up yet seems to be doing good i'll, I'll occasionally squeegee it clean but uh it, it's doing really well composting toilet has been working really well i know some people are a little squeamish and a little uneasy about composting toilets if you just kind of do your research and understand you know your materials that you want to mix in and you know that's honestly one of the big things is just making sure your material base that you're mixing in is good and then separating out your uh the uh liquids and everything's pretty pretty easy from there uh, the toilet was actually a uh a birthday present from my father you know that's how you know you're growing up when you get excited for a toilet for a birthday present <laughs> it was uh i think the first year when we were building it and i was looking into the nature's head toilets and when i showed that to my father he's like you're gonna spend a thousand dollars on a toilet and he was not he was, I guess he just wanted to steer me. He's like, you can do something else with a thousand dollars. So he, he uh, paid for our neighbor to actually build this out and just has a, an add on uh, urine diverter uh, tacked on there and everything. So yeah, that was actually a birthday present. So thank, thank you, thank you pops for that. Um, so in the back here, is just in a little storage bin so i keep some of the composting material in there i also keep my gray water hose for when i need to dump the gray water it actually lives in here and then up top is medicine cabinet as you can see it's kind of crammed full with just about everything uh i need to work on a latch for the medicine cabinet because last time i went driving i lost a lot of stuff on the floor so i know everybody that gets a school bus or a van or anything like that they always have really good stories about the first couple of times they go driving and realizing exactly what you actually need to, to bolt down and which things you forgot about and stuff so uh, medicine cabinet is uh, is on the list so this was some of the originals stuff that was in the bus so this just became the closet 
Funny story was this was going to be a spice rack to fit inside the door with the pantry, but one of those things you don't think about is how much clearance you have on your spice rack with the other drawers that were in the in the pantry. So we we uh, we got it built out and we put it on the door and then we went to shut the door and we couldn't shut the door. So it was either adjust all the drawers back or just move the spice rack somewhere else. So the spice rack is now the sock rack and uh, bandanas and scarves and, and whatever else. So it works out fine and we, we were able to still use it. Um, I downsized a little bit of clothes. As you can see, I have way too many clothes in here. Like I have three suits. I don't even know why I have three suits and never wear suits, but uh, I downsized a little bit of the clothes. Everything else was able to go in here and uh, I have a pretty full closet. So it's nice to not have to worry about having clothes under the bed or, or pulling stuff out of suitcases. It's all right here and easy to get at. So. I've had a lot of people ask me how long I plan on it and I currently don't have you know an end goal of you know how how far out I'm going to do it and you know how long I need to do it uh, I'm going to do it as long as I can as long as it works out and I'm enjoying it and I don't see otherwise this was such a labor of love with myself and my father over 2 years and it was you know a, a big learning experience it was very difficult at times it was financially uh, draining at times for sure and, and now that it, it's here and it, it turned out great and I'm getting to enjoy it I definitely don't want to let it go if, if I ever need to you know get into a, a place or a you know an apartment or something like that it'll still stay my my RV my travel you know part-time uh, bus that I can take out on trips and it'll still be perfect for that you know I could maybe rent it out as an Airbnb and make a little money on the side if I need to but uh, I definitely plan on riding out for the next several years for sure of you know enjoying the bus you know taking it out and traveling it and just uh, having a good time so we're in the bedroom area of the bus right now uh, on the bed we have a Zenus memory foam mattress which actually turned out to be a great purchase I think only Two three hundred bucks, and we got I got the twelve inch one, the super fat one, and it, it's been great. Uh, no complaints on on that. The desk area right now, this can fold down flat and go flush against the wall if I need a little bit more room. But being honest, since I've bought this desk, it has been folded up ever since, and it kind of stays here. A uh, little chair underneath. It's got some clothes on it right now, but sit here if I want to do a little bit of computer work or a little bit of artwork or anything. The dirty clothes I just have under the bed here and a big like Rubbermaid style tote. So whenever I need to, I just kind of pull that out. Dirty clothes goes in and underneath and whenever I'm uh, somewhere to do laundry, I just pull out the tote, slap the lid on there and uh, take it to the laundromat or wherever I needed to do. Through a couple of uh, just hanging cheapo storage baskets. I want to say that was like a Ross pickup, you know? TJ Maxx maybe, I don't know. I, I saw them and it matched the uh, the design I had down here. So I figured it would tie in the bedroom a little bit through those up there. Uh, more books and I cook books and some other things over there. So just miscellaneous storage above the bed. A uh, little fold out TV in the back for when I'm watching TV at night. And I have a little Vornado fan back there for when I'm not running AC or I just need to have a fan running through the night and that thing keeps up well. So uh, no complaints. And actually those little Vornado fans re work really well. So we're in the front of the bus right now, the cockpit area and a uh, little bit of extra storage area. So we kept basically everything original on the bus. Uh, didn't want to change anything and everything still worked, which we were very happy about when we got the bus. That was one of the things when we were shopping around a little bit, my father and I, is we wanted to make sure that the the engine itself and everything was in working order so that way we didn't end up having to uh, do body work do engine work if it was rusted out we wanted to make sure it was a florida bus make sure there wasn't uh it wasn't driving up north in the snow and the salt and everything so bus had about 130,000 miles on it and um everything works all the original uh bluebird stuff right now it's just set up since i'm parked you know i throw up the pictures with the family i've got all the plants out and everything uh 
my uh, little spot for my grandmother who passed away last year, unfortunately, but um, got her a little cross and she's kind of watching over me right there. Just went and bought a Amazon shoe rack. It actually fit perfectly under here. I don't know how I uh, got lucky. I don't even know if I measured it, to be honest, but <laughs> it ended up working. All the shoes live there. I have some more underneath the uh, the back of the bed. Yeah, so in the front here, just some books that I'm reading currently. And then I've got my little uh, squirrel figurine that I got here it's, uh, for Smokey. I had a squirrel that I fostered in when he fell out of a tree about a year ago. So he lived with me for about a month and I raised him up and started training him to go up trees and find food on his own and then finally released him in the wild, which was a sad day because I was hoping he was going to come back and we were going to get to hang out and play all the time. But he went off and did his own thing. So I got a little squirrel figurine to remember Smokey because uh, that guy was awesome and uh, it was fun having a pet. I never really had a pet myself, so I had a pet squirrel for a little bit and it was awesome. Highly recommended. So up above the TV, it pulls out. We've got just a little bit more storage on the right-hand side. So more books, uh, cookbooks, whatever else is also in here, as you can tell. A lot of books. I didn't really want to sell them all. I got rid of some, but it's kind of hard for me to, to part with the books. So I, I just want to make sure I found them. There's some uh, just like Reflectix that I have in there to help with the insulation in there. But yeah, just more cookbooks. There's a baking cookbook and a couple of other things in there. But um, it's just more storage I actually haven't needed, which has been cool. It's good to know that everything's not maxed out and I still have some spots where if I need to put some things that there's, there's still room. So that's good to know. As much as it seems very romantic and a lot of people had asked me when they saw me building the bus and when I was finishing that, oh, so you're just gonna dip out and travel and you know tour the US and just be gone forever. And I wish it was maybe that easy for me. And it would be nice to maybe take some extended trips in the bus, but I cook full time in a restaurant five days a week for a living. That's what I do. And that's what I enjoy doing. And it's what I feel like I'm good at. So I, I knew going into this, the, the bus would be parked definitely more full time and it would be weekend trips, you know, trips maybe over the summer or something like that. And I would get to take it out occasionally. I knew I was going to be parked. I knew I was going to be working five days a week and I was going to be able to save up a little bit of money and take trips with the bus. I've been with the same restaurant for the past three years in Tallahassee. I was going in the direction, I was working at FSU in the food department there and I was kind of getting pushed in the direction of a corporate dining hall chef and there was good money in it and there was job security and it was just not the route I wanted to go. I wanted to follow what uh, kind of like where my heart was leading me which was a little more you know independent restaurants made from scratch a little more care into it. I came from a, a big university so I was used to seeing three, 400 plates go out and there's kind of a disconnect and uh, you know, a relationship of, of enjoying getting to feed people. And I definitely get that more in the restaurant setting. Uh, it, it's super exciting because we're working towards opening a restaurant with uh, my current boss. We're partnering up to, to open something this August or September. So I'll be updating stuff like that on my Instagram. Uh, if people are interested in seeing uh, that take shape and that, that come to life. I'm really excited. I'm very nervous uh, to take hold of a concept and be a head chef and really be in charge, but I feel like it's the next step and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. So I know taking the bus out might become a little more on the, uh, the back foot a little bit and the restaurant's gonna definitely take a, the main role in my life and making sure that's successful and you know we're putting out good food and having a good time there. So, uh, but the, the bus will be perfect for, you know, if I need to get, take a weekend off and, and get out and head to the beach and, and just relax, that's exactly what I'll do. And, you know, take a day or two, come back and, and get back to work and, and stay grinding. So, all right, so we're on the uh, left side of the bus outside. This is where the uh, generator rack is. This was a project I did with my father. That was me learning how to weld a little bit. That was, that was fun and interesting. We've got a uh, 30 amp on the same side there so 
whenever I'm boondocking currently and I'm not plugged into shore power, which currently I am, which makes it nice and easy. But whenever I'm not, I have the generator and that will help run everything. But also if I need to top off the batteries, it'll do that as well until I get the solar panels. So when, uh, when I get the solar, hopefully that'll be doing most of the work and we'll just have the generator as backup. But currently if I take it out anywhere, it's usually the generator doing most of the work. And uh, yeah, it's worked out really good. Just have the little lock brackets on the side whenever we're driving. Um, propane tank is here. We cut a little access door in, same thing as uh, welding some mounts and having that welded up to the frame of the bus. A hundred pound tank and so far with the stove inside and the hot water heater, uh, which is right here, it's a little seven gallon hot water uh, tank heater. It lasted me three and a half months, four months. So uh, the only thing is, Gotta just obviously drive the bus somewhere to a propane fill place, but it's not bad. And it's also a good way to uh, take the bus out for a little ride and uh, go fill up the propane and go somewhere else while I'm doing it. Um, back of the bus here is just the freshwater inlet. Uh, it's just, we're just hooked up right now to uh, the hose off this well on this property currently. There is 45 gallons of fresh water underneath the bed and then another 45 gallon uh, gray water underneath the shower. And also with the sink running into that, the uh, the 45 gallons honestly can get me, I can stretch it to about a week comfortably. It's, you know, four or five days, but when I'm hooked up, I don't have to worry about it. And uh, it's a little bit easier, but in the future, that's maybe one, something I would upgrade a little bit is uh, throw maybe a hundred gallon tank under the bed. And that way I could go off grid for a couple of weeks, you know, even longer and not have to worry about filling up and, you know, could just hang out and not have to drive into town if I don't want to. So uh, I'm on Instagram, basically, at uh, Swayze, S-W-E-Z-Z-Z-E-Y. Um, I post the bus stuff on there, food stuff on there, things at the farm here with my garden and the animals and everything. So basically what I'm, what I'm doing now and what's, what's keeping me happy and what's, uh, what's in my life right now. So if you wanna follow along, you're more than welcome to. If you wanna look forward to the, to the new restaurant concept in Tallahassee, that'll be on there as well. So uh, yeah, check me out. Yeah, no, uh, thank you Tiny Home Tours for coming out and checking out the bus. Uh, I love the videos and I'm super excited to be, be a part of one and for people to check out the bus. And if you guys want to follow along on Instagram, you can. And uh, thanks for coming and checking out the bus. Now get out of here.